Hi guys and welcome back to another flip lesson. My name is Mr. Berger and today we are learning about igneous rocks also known as volcanic rocks. A quick reminder, I do move pretty fast in these videos, okay, um, knowing that you guys are able to pause the video. So whenever there's notes, feel free to just pause. I'm going to fly. Here we go. First, rock classification. There are three major groups of rocks and they are igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Today we are learning about the first one. And they're based on their methods of formation or origin. What does that mean? It means where the rocks came from, how they formed. That's how we decide um, how to refer to them, how to classify them. Where they form deep underground, where they form on the surface of the ground, etc. And what the special thing to take home here about igneous rocks is that they're formed from cooling and solidification of lava or magma. What do I mean by lava or magma? This is what I mean. Liquid hot magma is molten material below the surface of the earth, below the surface of the earth, okay? So anything that's below the surface of the earth, we're going to consider magma, any molten rock below the surface, and anything that's above the surface or reaches the surface, we call lava, like this picture on the bottom left corner, which is from Hawaii, which you'll see becomes a bit of a theme here. Now this picture um, is a, a, a picture of a magma chamber, and this is in Hawaii. I studied geology in Hawaii in 2003. And um, you might notice someone you recognize in a couple of these pictures if you look carefully. Um, <clears throat> but the reason we bring this picture up is because a magma chamber is underground. It is a magma chamber, not a lava chamber, because it's underground. And we refer to this as intrusive. I-N-T, intrusive meaning it is underground or inside the Earth's surface. This, on the other hand, is lava, which is on the Earth's surface. So this is in Hawaii again. Um, on the left here, in the bottom left corner, okay, this is an image that's going to show you what lava actually would look like above the ground. This is lava before it has become an igneous rock. And then eventually this will cool and become this. And that on the right there is an example of cooled lava, or what we refer to as igneous rock. Because this was formed on the Earth's surface, um, this is actually something called basalt, which we'll discuss in a little bit. This particular type of basalt, see those like ropes? It looks very ropey. Um, in Hawaiian, they refer to this as pahoehoe, believe it or not. OK, so how to classify a rock as igneous? So you pick up rocks on the ground. You go, I don't know which one's igneous. I don't know which one's sedimentary. Very simple. If you see intergrown crystals, kind of random crystals, they're not aligned in any specific way. They're not arranged in lines or bands, okay? They're not arranged in layers, then this is an igneous rock. The second way to know is if you see what we refer to as a vesicular rock, which means it contains holes or gas pockets like this piece of, you guessed it, pumice. Pumice has so many gas pockets, it's so... Um, not dense, that it actually floats in water. Cooling time versus crystal size, a very important concept in terms of igneous rocks. Here I've shown you a chart that indicates um, different types of rocks and their cooling time. So these rocks at the top, these two guys, they had barely any time to cool. See, almost no time to cool. We call this rapid cooling. Um, and this indicates that they're going to have what's referred to as a glassy texture. We'll come back to that later on. Glassy just means they do not have crystals. Notice, no crystals here and also no crystals here. Let's say we give rocks, igneous rocks, a little bit more time to cool. So the magma or the lava, instead of cooling really quickly at Earth's surface, um, buried deep underground, start to have a little more time to cool. So these, these rocks here, this one and this one, you know, still not big crystals, but you're starting to see them. There are very small crystals, okay, in here. And if you had a microscope, I'm not, sorry, not a microscope, if you had a hand lens, a magnifying glass, essentially, you could see a couple of crystals here. But again, very small. We refer to these as fine grain because fine means small. So fine grain, small grain. 
Now let's say we let's create Earth's surface here. Let's say that's Earth's surface. Then these are buried underground, meaning these two are intrusive, underground, formed underground. And if you give them a lot of time to cool underground, you're going to get, right, long time, you're going to get bigger crystals. So clearly the crystals here are a little bigger. We also refer to crystals as grains. Finally, if you give um, magma a very long time to cool, then you can have something with really big grains. And this particular igneous rock we refer to as pegmatite that has very coarse grains or very large grains. So very often on the regions, you'll get a question that says, state the relationship between two variables. So let's go ahead and state the relationship between these. As cooling time, something. Crystal size, something. So go ahead, take a moment, pause the video, give it a shot on your own, come back in one moment to um, check it out, the real answer. Okay, so hopefully that means you actually did that. Um, as cooling time increases, the size of the crystal of a given igneous rock is also going to increase. This also works for how deep it's buried underground. So the deep, more deep underground um, magma is buried, the larger the crystal size will be of the resulting igneous rock. Moving on. You should, at this time, pause the video so you can turn your reference table to this page. You need to know a lot about this page. Um, I'm going to talk about a few different things here, and then we'll do some practice together. So first of all, I want to draw your attention to where it says texture. Okay, very important. A few things about texture. Okay, um, the number one easiest thing to look at is the crystal size. So first of all, um, very coarse crystals, that just means 10 millimeters or larger. Now, if we start at the very coarse area, you'll notice that we talked about this before. That means very deep underground, right? Well, the only igneous rock on this whole chart that's buried very deep underground as very coarse crystals is pegmatite. So that's a very easy question if you're ever given a question that asks you about an igneous rock with a texture of very coarse. Things get a little more complicated as we start moving up the chart. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's look at coarse. So now we have coarse grains. So big grains, but not huge. These are going to be 1 mil millimeter to 10 millimeters in size. And this range of rocks can be anything in here. Now, how do you tell the difference between, throughout these rocks? So we have a rock. We found an igneous rock, and we know it has big grains. What do we do? Okay, first of all, first of all, we can notice a few things. We have to look for its color, its density, its composition, and more of its composition. So the mineral composition, which is written here, okay, which includes everything down here in this area of the chart. Okay, this is going to help us understand the rest of this piece. So let's take a look at granite. Just focus on granite for a moment. Granite is made of everything here. We can forget this side of the chart because granite's on the left side. So what does that mean if it's on the left side? I'll tell you. For one, for color, it means that it has a lighter color. For density, it means that it has a lower density. For composition, it has what we like to call a felsic composition. The word felsic, okay, that just comes from feldspar. That's where the FEL comes from. And feldspars tend to have a lot of, if you look carefully, silicon and aluminum in them. Okay, so looking at this chart, we should also see that if felsic's on the left, there has to be something on the right that balances it out. So the rocks on the left, any, any of these rocks inside the green here are going to be considered felsic, and any of the rocks on the green on this side are going to be considered, hold on, mafic. They're also going to be higher in density and darker in color. So the ones on the left 
are all, so anything here is going to involve everything that's here on the left side. And anything that's on the right side, all these are going to involve everything that's here on the right side. So darker, higher, and mafic, and include the stuff that's in there. Let's clear this up to make our lives easier. Okay, so going back, we have this granite. Let's talk about granite. We know that it's lighter in color, lower in density, felsic. It's going to have silicon and aluminum in it. But what's it made of? What minerals? Okay. Let's look underneath it. How do you know what something's made of on this chart? It's whatever's directly underneath it. So we're going to draw that line again. Look down here and notice granite is made of potassium feldspar, which is pink to white, quartz, which is clear to white, plagioclase feldspar, which is white to gray, Biotite, which is black, and amphibole, which is black. Now, we know that it's made of those because it's below it. Yes, yeah, so it crosses over one, two, three, four, five different colors or, or patterns. Why does it say pink to white? Why does it say clear to white? Well, it says that because when you are actually identifying a real igneous rock in your hand in class in the lab, you're going to look for pink and white to help tell you that maybe it's granite. You're going to notice that pink, the color pink, is only on the left side of the chart, and the color green is only on the right side. If you see green, it's one of these here. If you see pink, it's one of these here. Okay, a few examples. This one's going to look familiar to you. I'm looking at this rock. I see, first of all, the color pink. So as we talked about, this is going to be a felsic rock. It's going to be on the left side of our chart. That's number one. Number two, these are pretty big grains. We call this coarse grains. So, coarse grains. We saw pink. It's on this side. It's also, in general, pretty light colored. right? So we know that it's going to coarse, K, okay, follow along coarse, follow this up, and we again get granite. So we just talked about granite, and the first example is going to be granite. A quick note, we didn't talk about it before, the environment of formation. Anything below this line right here is going to be considered intrusive. Anything above it is going to be considered extrusive. Extrusive is above ground, intrusive below. Let's move on. Let's try this example. So this one, I don't see crystals that are too big, but I do see little grains in there. There's some little dots. So I'm going to say that it doesn't have no crystals, but it has small crystals. How about color? To me, this looks pretty dark. So let's take a look at the chart. We have lighter on the left, darker on the right, so this we just crossed out every single rock from here to here. We're only dealing with these now because we know it has to be dark colored. Good. And we also said that it had small grains but not no grains. Glassy means no grains, so it can't be these things. It wasn't very big um, crystals. It wasn't big crystals. It was small crystals. We call that fine. So it's going to have to fall in here somewhere. Okay. Diabase kind of crosses over both intrusive and extrusive, so I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. I, I want to stick with what we know is go going to be a fine grain rock, which is basalt. But is it vesicular basalt? Let's look. Vesicular means gas pockets. Do we see gas pockets? No. So we're going to stick with basalt. That second example is going to be basalt. Example three. Okay, running out of time, we're going to go pretty quickly here. So this rock, I see no green. I see no pink. This is going to be somewhere in the middle. So we're going to call this an intermediate rock. It's going to be something in the middle. That's number one. And looking again, very large crystals. Or I would just say large crystals. This is going to be coarse. So something in there, coarse crystals. This one's going to be considered diorite. So I'm really going, going based on the color. How did I know if it was just white or black that it would be in the middle? If you look down here, white to gray, black, black. There is no green. Green's on the right. There is no pink. Pink's on the left. Finally, dark colored, no crystals, and there are holes, gas pockets. Dark color, no crystals. That's glassy and it has gas pockets, vesicular. This is scoria. Okay, igneous rock lab next. Happy hunting.